Hi, my name is Chris Riemann, and I'm really happy to talk a little bit about the interim results on uh, the Up Regen project. These are my disclosures and those of the uh, many wonderful collaborators on this project. So Up Regen are human embryonic stem cells derived retinal pigment epithelial cells from ethically obtained human embryonic stem cells differentiated to RPE with cyclic GMP. The study objectives of this phase one and two A clinical trial are to evaluate the safety and tolerability of the Up Regen subretinally transplanted human embryonic stem cell derived RPE cells in patients with dry age related macular degeneration and geographic atrophy. The secondary objective is to look at the survival and possible effects of these uh, subretinally transplanted cells. And then the exploratory objective is to evaluate a new thaw and inject formulation of these cells, as well as the orbit subretinal delivery system as an alternate surgical way to get them into the subretinal space. This study has four cohorts. Cohorts one through three enroll 12 patients with very large GA and very poor vision. The fourth cohort is planned to include 12 patients with better vision and smaller geographic atrophy. Five of these patients have already been enrolled. Patients are given systemic immunosuppression with tacrolimus and microphenolate. Average visual acuity was 2400 in cohorts one through three and 2080 in patients recruited into cohort four. All 12 patients in cohorts one through three and three patients in cohort four were operated with the standard vitrectomy retinotomy approach to create the subretinal bleb. And two additional patients in cohort four were operated with the orbit subretinal delivery system to deliver the subretinal opregen cells. The orbit subretinal delivery system is a novel surgical procedure using novel instrumentation. A sclerotomy is created a special cannula is placed tangentially into the suprachoroidal space and advanced posteriorly towards the target area in the macula adjacent to the geographic atrophy. Once the target area is reached, a screw drive uh, drives a needle through the choroid and into the subretinal space. We inject BSS. Once we confirm a subretinal bleb, we turn a valve and switch from BSS to cells and deliver the opregen into the subretinal space. The subretinal injection is accomplished without a vitrectomy and without a retinotomy. Looking at the primary endpoint of systemic and ocular safety, the cohort one through three patients had poor vision to begin with and ended up with poor vision without any evidence of convincing visual acuity loss. Cohort four patients however, had improved visual acuity up to the one-year time point or the last visit. We saw no evidence of inflammation or immune response to the cells. There were no IOP problems, and a vast majority of the adverse events were mild. Systemic adverse events were also underwhelming, with asthenia and malaise reported by four patients, likely a side effect of the systemic immunosuppression. Taking a bit deeper of a dive into the ocular adverse events, there are a few things worth pointing out. Subretinal pigmentation was common and presented in 11 out of 17 patients. While the significance of this remains unclear, we feel as if it may represent a potentially positive finding as evidence of long-term survival of the subretinally transplanted opregen cells. On the negative side, one patient developed retinal detachment and 13 of 15 patients operated with a vitrectomy and retinotomy approach developed epiretinal membrane, one of which was severe enough to cause visual loss and require vitrectomy surgery. Visual acuity improved after the peeling, but the need for the vitrectomy to remove the epiretinal membrane is important. While the cause of these epiretinal membranes remains unclear, we felt as if a possible etiology may have been migration of the opregen cells through the retinotomy into the vitreous cavity post-transplantation. And this was an important underlying reason for us to explore the orbit subretinal delivery system for subretinal transplantation of the opregen cells without a vitrectomy and without a retinotomy. Despite the fact that we've only operated two patients with the orbit subretinal delivery system, 
we do think it's important to note that neither of these patients developed macular pucker, lamellar hole, retinoschisis, or retinal detachment. Both orbit subretinal delivery system patients did develop small subretinal hemorrhages. These were asymptomatic and both autoresolved. However, the significance of these remains unclear. In this photography montage of patient two over a four-year time period, we see the injection site marked by the red star, the extent of the bleb marked by the dotted yellow line, and we see hyperpigmentation superior to the area of geographic atrophy that persists over time. These are the actual upregen cells, and with a little bit of imagination, we might be able to detect a slight progression of the geographic atrophy inferiorly away from the operogen cells and no progression of the geographic atrophy superiorly closer to the operogen cells. Another very compelling finding is illustrated by this photo montage of a different patient from cohort three. Over time, we see that drusen diminish. You can see this in both color photographs over a span of 15 months time. And you can see this with serial OCTs from baseline one month, two months, and then 12 months. The area of the bleb where the cells were injected have a resolution of drusen, whereas the area outside the bleb more temporally show no or little change of drusen. This reduction of drusen effect has a spatial relationship and is much more prominent in the area of the bleb, then inferiorly away from the bleb, as illustrated by these color photos and OCT cuts over 12 months. Let's take a deeper dive into the clinical efficacy assessments in the five cohort four patients. Remember, three of these were operated with vitrectomy retinotomy, and two of them had the thon inject formulation of the cells injected via the orbit subretinal delivery system. This is the first cohort four patient. The treated eye had a marked greater than 10 letter gain of visual acuity that was sustained for 15 months of follow-up. Geographic atrophy slowed and reading speed improved, all compared to the untreated contralateral eye. Images of the fourth cohort four patient operated with the orbit subretinal delivery system reveal that with three months of follow-up, there are no remarkable changes of the atrophy. There's a subtle decrease in soft drusen. There are new pigmentary changes in the area where the bleb was, indicative of the oprogen cells being present. And we see a small area of RPE depigmentation supertemporally at the site of the RPE entry of the subretinal delivery system cannula and needle. Serial OCT imaging reveals the opregen cells in the subretinal bleb on post-op day one and recovery of outer segment anatomy by post-op month three. Serial color images of this same patient reveal a small supertemporal subretinal hemorrhage at the site of the orbit subretinal delivery system microneedle penetration, which completely resolved by the three month visit. And this eye went on to do quite well with improved visual acuity, less geographic atrophy progression, and better reading speed relative to the untreated fellow eye. Here is the second orbit subretinal delivery system patient. On post-op day one, we see a supertemporal bleb with pigmented subretinal cells. The bleb quickly resolves, but interestingly, at post-op month one, the patient develops a small supratemporal subretinal hemorrhage that was not present at the post-op week one visit. It's associated with a small amount of RPE and choroidal pigmentary change in the area of the suprachoroidal subretinal delivery system cannula. This hemorrhage was non-progressive, auto-resolved in a short period of time, and was asymptomatic for its entire duration. An extensive imaging workup in this area failed to reveal any evidence of choroidal neovascularization. The pooled visual acuity data of all five cohort four patients demonstrates a significant greater than 10 line sustained visual acuity improvement over the entire follow-up period. Graphs of the individual treated versus fellow eye visual acuity suggest a substantial treatment response to the opregen. Reading center assessments of geographic atrophy area over time also suggest 
a reduction of geographic atrophy progression in the treated versus fellow eyes. This data is not quite as impressive as the visual acuity data because the data is noisy and we're only looking at five patients. So I think we can conclude that Oprogen appears well tolerated in patients treated to date. Improvements in drusen, retinal outer layers, and retinal pigment epithelium within the area of Oprogen transplant were observed and have persisted in some patients. Asymmetrical progression of geographic atrophy in the treated areas has been observed and the change in the total area is trending towards slower growth in treated versus fellow eyes. Better visual acuity and improved reading speed has been observed in some early cohort patients and all cohort 4 patients after Opregen. Subretinal pigmentation of the treated area persisted in many patients and may suggest durability of transplanted Opregen cells. Mostly mild to moderate epiretinal membranes in patients receiving Opregen via the vitrectomy retinotomy approach were the most frequent ocular adverse events and have not been seen in the orbit subretinal delivery system operated patients to date. Opregen thaw and inject formulation delivered via the orbit subretinal delivery system has been utilized in two patients. And cohort four is ongoing treating patients with better vision, smaller areas of geographic atrophy, and a known history of recent geographic atrophy progression. We hope to reproduce and validate these really exciting preliminary results. Thank you very much to our principal investigators, our study sponsors, and of course our patients. Many thanks to you, the listener, for tuning into our talk.